Shadow, Science, Innovation and Technology Secretary. What we heard there, you're going to lose the next election. I don't think that's unlikely. I don't think that's likely at, at all, because if, if you looked at Swan Abraham's speech today, I didn't see all of it, but I saw the clips you just played. You, you would give the impression that you're looking at somebody who is a, a shock jock, a commentator, not somebody who is actually the Home Secretary. This is somebody who has blamed UK courts, who has blamed European judges, and now she's gone global with her blame. But just look at the facts. Since 2010, the number of people who have been returned after failing to, to get, a, get a, a, an asylum application granted has fallen by 70%. This happened on her watch. When, when Rishi Sunak said earlier this year that he was going to stop the small boats and that he was going to end the use of hotels for asylum seekers, it was costing us, as a country, £6 million a day. It's now costing £8 million a day. So this is all Suala Braverman's fault. It is her department that's responsible for all of this, and all of the statistics are going in the wrong direction. For asylum seekers who are coming here, they're waiting two years, often more, just to have their claim processed. And now she's going abroad and blaming some kind of international treaty for what is her failure to run her government department properly. Some, some people will listen to what Suella Braverman says and think, you know what, she's got a point. You know, we can't take in every person who fears discrimination because, sadly, there are a lot of countries in the world that do discriminate. Would, I mean, do you agree with her there? Of course uh, we, we, agree, we agree that people who come here who claim asylum uh, they need to have their uh, their, pro their application process. If they fail, they need to be returned. What that's what's saying, not happening. But what she's saying is that the system itself, the, the, the merits on which the asylum claims are being processed, is wrong. It needs updating. No, what needs to happen is that we need to have a process that is well run so that people who do claim... Uh, look, look, the whole system has been mismanaged. It, we, if you look at the small boats, five years ago there were 400 people coming across the channel on small boats. Now we're looking at almost 50,000, maybe touching even 60,000. That's because the government failed to see it happening. They, they, they broke the system for which okay. the, the applications happen. So now look, to, to I, fix the system, we need to stop sending more home secretaries to Rwanda than asylum seekers, use that money to set up a criminal task force within the, the National Crime Agency so that we can work with Interpol and our European neighbours. We can start cracking down on those uh, criminal gangs who are tra trafficking the people. We need to have... It's hard, it's we need hard to have, though, you know, like, we've heard an awful lot about busting It would be nice to try, wouldn't it? It would be nice well, to they, have a government think, that tried. No, I, think the the, government... I think the Home Secretary would say that they are trying no, to bust the gangs. And Interpol themselves said that it's actually... This is such a difficult thing to crack because it's transient, the relationships course, people it's, have with people. It's difficult it, you to know, crack. Anyone waved a magic wand, then do it, then they do it, wouldn't they? Of course it's difficult to crack, but it would be nice to have a government that actually tried rather than flew around the, the world just posturing. I mean, you can't... To, to, to have... Is it a leader pitch, pitch you think? Oh, there's no, there's no question. She, she does very little else. But, look, these are all policies that don't work, costing taxpayers an exorbitant amount of money, £8 million a day, to house the failure of Suala Braverman to get a grip on the asylum programme in this country. Okay. The number of individual cases processed by one individual caseworker in the Home Office has fallen 50% in the last five years. Swala Braverman is up to her neck in the failure no, and now she's blaming others. A, a few other questions for you, yeah. if I may. I've just come back down from Lib Dem conference in Bournemouth and Lib Dem MPs couldn't walk three metres without a journalist saying, are you going to go into a coalition with Labour? So I, they wouldn't give a straight answer, so I'm wondering if you'd give a straight answer to that question. Would Labour go into coalition with the Lib Dems? No, because we don't need to. We are ahead in the polls. We have the program for government. It is resp it That's is, a different it is working. Question. No, it's what, not. What, if if there was a hung parliament, which the polls suggest is is a likely possibility, would you go into coalition with the Lib Dems? No, because the polls are not suggesting a hung parliament. The polls are suggesting. I said I said that it's suggesting that it is likely. No, that is. The the polls are not suggesting a hung parliament. What the polls are suggesting is they want a clear, credible. Uh, alternative, a programme for government based on a mission-led government, okay. led by Keir Starmer. Okay. That's why we are not consistently get, 20 not points ahead. Get, not we get a will not need the Lib Dems. Well. Let me just tell you this, Sophie. The Lib Dems are a party that is looking for some coattails to ride into government. It will not be the Labour Party that provides them with that journey. The Labour Party is seeking to govern in its own right, and that is why we're doing so well with voters at the moment, because people are responding to Keir Starmer's mission-led government uh, in waiting so that we can start tackling the big challenges the country faces, but not just to mitigate the challenges that's left behind, like 7.7 .7 million people waiting for treatment on the HS. 
creating new opportunities, harnessing the technologies of the future, create new jobs, seeing that the green challenge we face is not just an, an existential challenge of climate change, it is an opportunity to create the jobs of the you've, future and the wealth creation of the future. You've got some research about employment figures out today, haven't you, as well? What, what's that showing? Well, it's showing out of the 38 countries in the OECD, which is 38 countries which are like-minded uh, like with, with us as a, as a country, we are the only one that is going backwards when it comes to unemployment, employment and people who are economically inactive. The only one. We need to make sure that we retool our Job Centre Pluses, get them facing the future, to, because there's been no work on reforming the way we work with individuals since the COVID pandemic. So we have a whole class of people, a whole group of people who are in an, economically inactive. We're not looking at the specific reasons for it. We're not actually making the effort in to try and give them the tailored support they need to get back into now, the workplace. there's one other thing that I do want to squeeze in uh, before we come to the end of the interview, because I am totally confused about <laughs> HS2. What, what is Labour's position, right? What, what is it? Well, you've got to tell us what the government position is so that we can respond to it. What is the... the, why, the, what is the why, why do I need to tell you what the government position is? What, what's Labour's position? I'll tell you why, Sophie, because when, when we left office... Why does it make any difference what the government's well, position is? Let me explain is? to you why. It, Very confused it, it, still. It, it, I don't think well, it's going to be cleared up. Let me explain to you <laughs> okay. why, Sophie. When we left office and we commissioned the HS2, then the government did the implementation plan. It cost 30, the, the plan they put forward cost £32 billion. Since then, because they have extended it, they've contracted it, they've cancelled contracts, put bits on hold, they've then recommissioned bits of it that they'd already previously commissioned, and we've had inflation caused by the mini-budget of the government last year. So costs have gone up by £60 billion. Pounds. OK, they're so now what will Labour do? They're now talking about cancelling again. What Labour will do is see what the state of this programme is when we get towards the, the point of a general election and we will make sure that we deliver the high-speed infrastructure and the rail infrastructure that the country needs at that point. We cannot commit until we see how much more damage this government are going to do to our economy, so you, you to jobs, you to growth, to the and to... HS2. We, don't that, that, that's know, the... we don't know what we're going to inherit. How can I say it until you can tell me with, in specific terms what the government, what we're are going to leave for us to inherit should we take uh, office next year? I can't tell you what we're going to have okay. to do in response. So when you get a, an answer out of the government, I'll come back and give you an answer about what the Labour okay. Party will do, because we need to see how much more damage they're going to do to our rail well, infrastructure, we'll get an to our economy, our of public either services, you or the government. and our asylum, uh, asylum system. <laughs> Thank you very much for being on the programme. Peter Carl there.